If you've ever fallen or slid on artificial grass, then you know that it can tear up your skin. And the reason for that is because it's a very harsh, abrasive surface. For that same reason, AG Fields can be very tough on your boots, which is why if you play almost exclusively on artificial grass, I definitely think that it's worthwhile, not just from a durability perspective, but also from a safety and performance perspective to invest in some AG boots. Although if you slide, it'll still suck. What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new AG Pro stud pattern variation of the Nike Phantom Venom Elite in the launch game over pack colorway. The upper of the brand new Phantom Venom, but a sole plate and stud pattern that's totally different from the FG version in that it's made specifically for use on artificial grass. So what I wanna do in today's video is of course go over all of the details and focus a lot on the sole plate and stud pattern, how it differs from the FG version and why this is better suited for use on artificial grass. We'll also take a look at how they fit and feel on feet and essentially cover everything that you need to know. So if you wanna learn more, please stick around. Now, if you're interested in getting a pair of these for yourself, unfortunately, for whatever reason, they're not available in the US with the AG Pro stud pattern. I am not sure why that is. I don't see any logic behind Nike not putting them out in the US, but for whatever reason, that's the case. Either way, they are actually available in Europe at a pretty reasonable price, and you can get it from certain retailers with a pretty low shipping cost as well. The retail on this guy is normally 250 bucks. If you click the little pop-up on screen or the first link down below, that's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find these things with a retail price of about $230 out of Europe from a couple different retailers. So if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you guys do end up enjoying this video and perhaps wanna see more reviews of other boots with AG or even soft ground stud patterns, please support this video with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time and don't wanna miss out on future content from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. Like any other top end Nike boot, it comes in a gray and black Nike box that looks like this. Also included is this pretty good looking string bag in the matching black and orange. You can see it has this cool kind of target symbol in the middle with the Phantom Venom branding, some black detailing around the edges, a Nike swoosh at the bottom, nothing on the back whatsoever, but a good looking string bag nonetheless. It gets an official string bag score of 7, teen point two out of 21. So here's a side-by-side -side look of the FG and the AG variations of the Phantom Venom Elite in the same game over pack colorway. You can see that the uppers are identical. There is no difference there whatsoever, but flip it to the bottom and you'll notice that the sole plates and stud patterns are quite a bit different. The FG variation features their new hyper-reactive sole plate with the brand new FG AG stud pattern, all chevron bladed studs that actually offers really aggressive traction, but for use on artificial grass, I would actually argue that the traction is a little bit too aggressive and you get this very clingy sensation, not to mention in terms of long-term durability, they're just not made for use on artificial grass, where you'll find with the AG variation, it is a completely different sole plate and a completely different stud pattern, similar to what we've seen from other AG models from Nike in the past. So they have not reinvented the wheel here, but the first thing that you'll immediately notice is that the plastic used is a little bit thicker. It does have this added lip running around the forefoot and toe box area. And then the studs themselves are all conical in shape and have this unique hollowed out design through the middle that actually allow them to have a little bit of flex. So in my opinion, the best way to explain the difference between an FG and an AG stud pattern when being used on artificial grass, because let's face it, plenty of people wear FG stud patterns on artificial grass and seemingly nothing goes wrong, but there are a few things to note and it's mainly two points. And that is one, that the durability of the boots will be better when it's an AG specific model. And two, you will actually be safer as a player wearing an AG boot on artificial grass. Clearly the main difference between the FG and the AG Pro stud pattern is gonna be the use of conical studs rather than bladed studs. And I would say that pretty much any FG stud pattern will offer good traction on artificial grass. And that's due to the nature of artificial grass just being a very abrasive, clingy surface. Any kind of stud that penetrates the ground, those plastic blades of grass and the rubber pellets, they're going to stick. You're going to get that grip. The issue is you want to have that freedom to twist and pivot still. And most FG stud patterns, especially with bladed studs, they tend to have this cling where once your foot is planted, it is totally stuck. And should you get bumped the wrong way or push off a little bit too hard, 
or maybe even just stop in the wrong way with your foot at the wrong angle, you could actually cause some pretty serious injuries to your knees, your ankles, even your hips. Knees probably being the most common one, and I'm sure there's plenty of people watching this video that have suffered some pretty severe injuries due to having a clingy stud pattern on an artificial grass playing surface. That risk is significantly lower with an AG specific stud pattern, where what Nike has done here is they've gone for all conical studs, of course, which are automatically not going to have that clingy sensation. It's gonna give you that freedom to twist and pivot, which is what you want from a safety standpoint. The traction you get is still going to be very aggressive. Pretty much anything with studs on AG is gonna offer plenty of traction, so that's not gonna be an issue here at all. And then to further avoid that cling, you'll notice that Nike has a pretty unique design to these studs and that they're not only just rounded, they're actually hollowed out through the middle and the very tip that's black in color is actually a softer rubber material. So it's difficult for me to show you just with the tip of my finger because they are quite stiff, but there's a little bit of a flex to these studs and that is again to really make sure that when you plant your foot and push off, you have that freedom to twist and pivot. The stud is not getting stuck into the ground, which again, can be a dangerous thing long term. When it comes to durability, that's where the sole plate on this AG Pro model is specialized for the sake of lasting a long time on an artificial grass surface. In comparison to the FG model, it utilizes different types of plastics that are layered differently and are actually thicker in general. The reason why they're a little bit thicker is because you wanna ensure that there is some kind of a protection for the bond between the sole plate and the upper. Likely, I don't know this for sure, they use the same types of glues but if you've ever played on an artificial grass surface on a hot summer day, you know that that surface can be extremely warm, if not burning your feet because it's so hot. And having that extra thickness for the sole plate is going to ensure that the bond between the sole plate and the upper is as strong as possible in those very harsh conditions on your boots and your feet for that matter. You'll also notice, again, due to the fact that artificial grass is so abrasive, they have up the lip around the toe box and forefoot area, again, to ensure that bond between the sole plate and the stud pattern is as strong as possible. You can see on the FG model, that's the AG model. Here's the FG model. It is significantly lower. I think it's also worth noting that while this is technically made for use on artificial grass, this is a stud pattern that you can get away with using on firm natural grass, and it's not gonna harm the boots in any way at all, nor is it going to affect your ability to make a warranty claim should something go wrong. Artificial grass is much harder on your boots than natural grass could ever be. And being that this is more or less just a traditional firm ground stud pattern in terms of how it's actually laid out, aside from the hollowed out studs, which yes, dirt will get in the middle of the studs, not really that big of a deal. For use on natural grass, you definitely can get away with using this. In fact, Neymar, who technically is injured right now, so maybe it's not the best example, has actually been wearing the AG Pro stud pattern on his boots while playing on natural grass, basically since the World Cup. What I'm getting at here is that while they're not technically FGAG boots, you can get away with using them as FGAG boots, more so than the firm ground model. Since the sole plate and stud pattern is different in comparison to the FG version, surely the weight must be as well. And technically it is, although it's a very small difference. In a size 9.5 US, the AG Pro variation of the Phantom Venom Elite weighs in at about seven and a half, 7.6 ounces, which is roughly about 0.4 ounces more than the FG variation. It's a very small amount of weight that honestly, you're not gonna notice at all. And again, if you're playing a lot on artificial grass, the benefits of having that AG Pro sole plate and stud pattern is definitely worth the couple of extra grams. All of those details aside, the upper is identical to the FG variation. It features a full fly knit construction for the upper that's a lot thinner than you might expect, being that this is more or less being marketed as a power slash accuracy boot. And that is kind of its unique claim to fame right now. The upper, while it might not look like it, it does have this interesting kind of honeycomb texturing here at the front, does have this slightly sticky silicone finish to it. So there is additional grip on the ball that I would say is more than what you'll get from pretty much anything else out there right now. And then it does have the power, or sorry, precision power striking element here 
on the medial side of the upper kind of old school t90 we haven't really seen anything like this from nike or any other brand for that matter in a very long time and while the striking element isn't actually made out of rubber it's just the same silicone texturing as the rest of the boot it does have this deboss texturing with some interesting kind of raised design to it that does offer a unique feel it's thinner than you might expect but again the extra grip and just general feel of a striking element is something that at the moment is very much unique to the phantom venom and something that i am personally a big fan of i think the one takeaway that you need to be aware of before getting into these boots is yes they do have that kind of old school power boot vibe to them but it's almost power boot meets speed boots in regards to how they fit and feel being how thin the upper is. It also has ACC. Taking over for the Hypervenom line, it does maintain the off-centered lacing system with the laces running down the lateral side of the boot. You will find that the lacing system does have this lace cover at the bottom half, but there is in fact laces that go all the way down and they attach to the upper by way of flywire cables that basically run from the base of the sole directly into the lacing system at all the different positions. So when you tie the laces tight, it really does give you this secure locked in sensation that again, makes these feel more like speed boots than you might expect. It does also have an elasticated fly knit tongue running down the middle, which I quite like the feel of. A low cut construction is consistent across the entire line. They have not made a mid cut variation as of yet. And I honestly don't think that they will. Features the same internal plastic heel counter as the FG variation, even though these little flares on the side are technically different. That's not something that you'll notice whatsoever. And then internally it has a really nice heel liner with some nice synthetic leather on the sides and then a really soft synthetic suede directly down the back. And then moving to the insole, this is where you'll also find a small difference in comparison to the FG variation. The liner is identical. It's the Nike grip mesh texturing that just feels like regular mesh, but flip it over and you'll notice that it's not the same ortholite foam. It's actually the insole that you would typically find on the Tiempo, which is this thicker, more dense yellow foam with the pour on foam inserts in the forefoot as well as the heel this is thicker offers more underfoot cushioning and i think part of the logic behind that is because these are made for artificial grass where it is going to be likely uh, i guess put in a very hot environment especially if you're outdoors this is going to be better suited long term both in regards to comfort heat dispersion as well as durability for use on artificial grass. On feet, in comparison to the FG variation, the AG Pro model feels very similar. The one thing that I would say is noticeable is the feeling of the sole plate, but it's not necessarily what I would say better or worse, it's just a little bit different. Flexibility is very similar, maybe it's a touch stiffer, obviously the material is a little bit thicker as well, but once you start running around, it's really not something that you notice at all. As far as the shape of the boot is concerned, feels pretty much identical in comparison to the FG variation. So if you were worried about the fit changing due to the stud pattern and sole plate, that does not seem to be the case whatsoever. As a whole, out of the box, the Phantom Venom is a very comfortable boot. The fly knit upper is soft, it's flexible, it's a lot thinner than you might expect, and it also has a much more snug, dare I say, kind of mercurial-esque silhouette to it. And then it just wraps your foot very tightly more so than you might expect from something that looks so much like kind of an old school T90 power boot, but it really does have that speed boot vibe about it. It's not to the point where Mercurials almost feel like they're squeezing your feet. They're definitely not that tight, but they definitely have a very snug fit overall. I would say the second tightest fitting boot from the Nike brand right now. Speaking of the tightness and the width, width wise, I'd say that these are gonna be suitable for most people. There's definitely a little bit more uh, tightness through the forefoot and toe box area, width wise through the middle, I'd say they are pretty average, but as long as you don't have excessively wide feet, I think you're not gonna have too many issues fitting in these at all. They will fit most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US, and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So while it might seem like there's just a few small differences when comparing the AG Pro and the FG variation of the Phantom Venom Elite, trust me when I say that all of these small differences do add up in creating a much better overall and certainly safer experience when you're playing exclusively on artificial grass. Trust me when I say that the durability will be better, the comfort overall will be better, and again, most importantly, the safety 
is better with an AG Pro stud pattern. And maybe that sounds like I'm being a little bit too cautious, but it only takes that one time to suffer a very serious knee injury that can put you out of commission for the better part of nine months. And you might not ever come back exactly the same. So if you can avoid that risk, as much as possible, I really feel like investing in an AG Pro stud pattern if you play on artificial grass a lot is definitely worth the money. Anyways, guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find multiple links from different retailers that do have the AG Pro variation of this boot and other top end Nike models readily available. So be sure to go ahead and check that out if you're interested in a pair. Any questions as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.